Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, we'll create a professional 3D product animation from scratch without using any plugins. Before we start, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to support my work and help this content reach more people. If you're ready, let's get started. New composition to create a 1920 by 1080 workspace at 60 frames per second with a duration of 20 seconds. Now, let's create a background for our scene. Right click, select New Solid, and name it Background. To add depth to the background, drag and drop the gradient ramp effect from the effects panel. Then, let's adjust the colors to match the theme of our design. Change the ramp shape to radial ramp to create a centered lighting effect. Move the black tones to the center to define our focal point and expand its size. Finally, set the start and end colors. I'll be using my predefined color codes to maintain consistency. Now, let's drag our 3D model from the project panel and drop it into our workspace. This will place our main visual right into the center of the composition. In the pop-up window, click Make Comp Size. This will automatically scale the model to match the exact dimensions of our composition. Since the model looks a bit small, let's increase the scale value to make it larger. This will ensure the product stands out and stays at the center of attention. Now let's create the platform where our product will sit. Select the Ellipse tool from the top menu. Hold down the Shift key while drawing to create a perfect circle in the composition window. This shape layer will serve as a stylish stand for our product. Let's align the shape layer to the exact center of the product. Next, enable the 3D layer switch for this layer. Press R on your keyboard to reveal the rotation properties and set the X rotation to minus 90 degrees to turn it into a flat floor. To ensure everything is perfectly placed, switch the camera view to top. Finally, precisely adjust the platform so it sits perfectly underneath the base of our model. To give the platform a realistic 3D look, we'll use the Geometry options. Open the Geometry options under Ellipse 1 in the Layer panel. As you increase the Extrusion Depth value, you'll see the flat circle extend downward, transforming into a solid 3D platform. To make the edges of the platform look smoother and more realistic, we'll use the Bevel Style settings. Change the style to Convex. Then, increase the Bevel Depth value to give the edges an elegant, inward curving shape. To make our scene more vibrant and realistic, let's add a light source. Right-click and select Light from the New menu. The most important step here is to set the light type to Environment. Also, make sure to enable Casts Shadows, otherwise the model won't cast any shadows on the platform. To add realistic light reflections to the model, I'll be using an HDR map. I downloaded this HDR file from Polyhaven. HDR lighting provides environmental reflections on the model, giving it a much more realistic and premium look. Now, let's turn off the visibility of the HDR layer, as we'll be using it solely as a light source. In the light settings, select our HDR texture from the Source drop-down menu. As you can see, beautiful light reflections have appeared on our model. You can also adjust the direction of the light by using the settings under the Transform tab. To apply reflections to the platform, go to Material Options under the Shape layer. Increase the specular shininess to create realistic light reflections on the platform's surface. There we go! The light reflections look perfect on both the model and the platform. Now it's time to add some movement and animate our model. With the model selected, press P to reveal the position properties. Create a keyframe on the first frame. Then, hold Shift and press R to bring up the rotation properties as well. Now, let's add keyframes for both Z and Y rotation. Move forward 1 second and 40 frames to add the second set of keyframes. Go back to the first frame and move the model upward. Finally, at the last keyframe, set the Z rotation to 1 to make the model complete a full 360 degree spin as it lands. To make the movement more natural, let's add some tilt. 
set the Y rotation to 20 at the start and minus 10 in the middle. This creates a dynamic swaying effect as the model spins and falls into place. Select all keyframes and apply Easy Ease. Then select Position and Z Rotation to open the graph editor. Adjust the curve from fast to slow so the model enters quickly and lands smoothly on the platform. Great! Now let's apply the same position and rotation movement to the platform. By adding these animations, we'll ensure the platform enters the scene in perfect sync with the model. To enrich the scene, select the model and platform, then use Duplicate, Ctrl plus D, from the Edit menu. With the new layer selected, press P to open the position properties. Make sure you're on the last keyframe. With all keyframes selected, change the model's position to move it away from the front model and over to the left. This creates a parallax effect that adds depth to our scene. Now, let's do the same for the platform. With all keyframes selected, move the platform to the left and align it right under our new model. To fill the gap under the platform, open the layer settings. Increase the extrusion depth under geometry options to close the gap and complete the look. Let's fix the position error. On the first keyframe, pull the platform downward. And finally, move the model upward. This will eliminate any position inconsistencies in the animation. I'll adjust the Y rotation value so this model rotates differently than the other one. This small change will create a more pleasing and dynamic look as they fall at different angles. Now duplicate the model and platform again and move them to the right. Remember, to avoid creating extra keyframes, make sure you are on the last position keyframe and that all position keyframes are selected before moving. Everything looks good so far, but having all models enter the scene at the same time feels a bit flat. To fix this, let's offset the layers in the timeline. This way, the models will enter sequentially rather than all at once, creating a much more dynamic and professional look. Let's add a camera to our scene. For my setup, these specific camera settings provide the best and most pleasing look. To control the camera movement more easily, right-click on the camera layer and select Create Orbit Null from the camera menu. This creates a null object linked to our camera, making rotations and movements much simpler to manage. Open the position properties of the null object and add a keyframe. Move forward 1 second and 40 frames in the timeline, then zoom in and adjust the camera position so the model on the left is clearly in view. Select all keyframes and apply Easy Ease. Then open the graph editor to adjust the speed curves, ensuring the camera zoom has a much smoother and more professional transition. Let's have the model rotate as the camera approaches. Open the model's rotation settings and add a keyframe at the start of the camera move. At the final keyframe, set the rotation value to 2 so the model spins elegantly as the camera zooms in. Open the graph editor to adjust the rotation speed. By refining the curves, we'll ensure the rotation syncs perfectly with the camera movement, starting and ending smoothly. We want the model to appear blurred as the camera approaches. Since our 3D render settings are set to advanced, the camera options might only show zoom. To overcome this, we will apply the blur effect manually. To control the manual blur effect, let's add a new adjustment layer to our scene. Rename this layer to Blur to keep our project organized. 
Find the fast box blur effect in the effects and presets panel and apply it to our adjustment layer. This effect allows us to create manual blur transitions quickly without sacrificing performance. Select the null object and press U to see the keyframes, then move to the first frame. Now select the blur layer and add a keyframe to blur radius. Move to the last keyframe and increase the radius. Finally, press U on the blur layer, select all keyframes, apply Easy Ease F9, and fine tune the timing to perfectly match the camera movement. Currently, the blur affects the entire scene. To fix this, I'll add a mask to the blur layer. This ensures that as the camera zooms in, only the models on the right get blurred, while our main model on the left stays perfectly sharp. Let's enhance our scene by adding the product name and its features. First, import the Nivea logo into the project and place it into the scene. Let's scale down the logo to fit our scene's composition. Then, use the position settings to move it to the most suitable spot, ensuring it complements the product layout. Since the original logo is black, it doesn't quite match the color tones of our current scene. To fix this, let's apply the Fill effect from the Effects and Presets panel to the logo. By changing the color setting to white, we'll ensure the logo looks much cleaner and more professional within the scene. Let's remove the small icon. Use the Pin tool to mask the area. Since only the unwanted part is visible, we'll invert it. With the logo selected, press M, change Add to Subtract, and make only the Nivea logo visible. Let's adjust when the logo appears by moving the layer to that specific time. By setting the starting point on the timeline, we ensure the logo enters the scene at exactly the right moment. Let's animate the Nivea logo using a mask. Select the logo layer and create a mask with the mask tool. Keyframe the mask path value to make the logo reveal itself with an animation. Let's apply feather to the mask to reduce the sharpness of the transition. By increasing the mask feather value, we can make the logo reveal animation look much smoother and professional. Finally, let's select all keyframes and apply Easy Ease to soften the movements. Then, go into the graph editor to adjust the animation speed for a smoother flow. At this stage, I'm going to add the product-related text to the scene. Since writing and positioning the text takes some time, I'll speed up or shorten this part to avoid making the video unnecessarily long. Technically, I'm not doing anything extra here. I'm simply creating the text and adjusting its position. So the workflow doesn't change. We're just moving through this part quickly because it involves repetitive steps. Now I'm going to add a checkmark icon in front of the text. First, I select the Rectangle tool and create a shape layer. I turn off the fill, keep only the stroke, and set its color to white. To achieve a thinner look, I set the stroke width to 1. Draw a rectangle matching the text size and place it in front of the text. Add trim paths to the shape layer, set the end value to 0. Keyframe the start value at the beginning move 60 frames forward, and set it to 100. Finally, select all keyframes, apply Easy Ease, and adjust the speed in the graph editor. Now I'm creating the green check mark inside the rectangle. Using the pen tool, I draw a check mark at the appropriate size. I set its color to green. To animate it, I apply the same trim paths technique, keyframing the start and end values so the check mark draws on smoothly. Since the animations for both layers currently happen at the same time, I'm offsetting their start times. This way, the rectangle will form first, followed immediately by the appearance of the green check mark. Before moving on to other steps, I am adjusting the position of the text and the rectangle. 
I'm precisely setting their locations to ensure both layers look balanced and properly aligned within the scene. Let's duplicate the animated layers and place them in front of the other text elements. This allows us to quickly reuse the same animation structure for the remaining points. I am timing the start of the text exactly at the moment the Nivea logo finishes its reveal. This ensures a professional flow, directing the viewer's attention to the text as soon as the logo is visible. At this stage, instead of creating keyframes manually for each line of text, I am using ready-made presets from Animation Composer. Since this process involves repetitive steps that are technically identical, I am speeding up this section to maintain the video's pace and value your time. This allows us to focus on the overall result rather than getting bogged down in repetitive technicalities. And that's it. We've reached the end of another tutorial, and everything is ready. I hope this information proves helpful in your projects. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have any questions, let's meet in the comments. See you in the next video. Goodbye.